Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at One Spin with John Hallman, who's going to talk today about hardware Trojans. So John, we've heard a lot about hardware Trojans for a long time, mostly out of the government. How real are they? They are a very real concern. Uh, academics, uh, for a number of years, have shown many different avenues in which they can insert some type of logic or some type of function into your chips. At any point in time, it could be activated and you may have some function uh, not really behaving the way you might one, once expected it to. And that's part of the problem, right, is that it could come out later as a latent type of uh, uh, security threat and also that you don't necessarily know where it is and you may never know. That's right. Uh, with some of these countdown type timers, it may be weeks, it could be months before something that might even be activated. So let's drill down into this a bit. Absolutely. So John, what are we looking at here? Uh, here we just have a simplified uh, the digital design cycle, uh, showing our requirements, design, synthesis, all the way down to, in the ASIC case, we're handing it off to a fab, or even in the FPGA case, we're creating a bitstream. Uh, where we show it in red uh, are different areas where you could infiltrate a design cycle, uh, introduce some type of uh, function into a normal design process, whether it be at requirements or part of the design. Uh, an IP uh, brought in prior to synthesis may have some unknown latent function that gets integrated into your design. And while you try to do later verification at the later stages, you have no idea that this embedded Trojan uh, might take once at, at some time take effect. Sometimes you have a couple billion transistors in these designs. How do you find out which circuitry is real and which one it should not be there? So basically your, your idea is you want the chip to do what it's supposed to do, but you don't want to do what it's not supposed to do. It is the traditional finding the needle in the haystack uh, type of problem. Uh, but we can break it down into a couple of different areas to specialize in. We can look at the design itself at the RTL level. What are some things that we can do? People aren't looking for these Trojans now. We can start. Uh, it's being able to identify structures, library uh, components, uh, pieces of known bad structures. Is there a model of a hardware Trojan out there? Probably not, but there are some design characteristics you can certainly latch onto. If you have a very, very large counter that counts down to uh, a known value, and you don't know why that counter is in your design, certainly that's identifying that counter is something that's very easily done, very automated, and can give you an indication that there's some type of timer uh, device in that design. One of the risks of this is, as particularly as you start moving to things like chiplets, you've got hard IP that's coming from a lot of different places, and it can even creep in in the, in the code as well. Um, how do you find out, do you have to check every piece of IP that's coming in? Do you have to check how that IP integrates into the rest of the design? You do have to validate an IP at some point, whether it's at your requirements or your design phase. At some point, you do have to compare that piece of IP to your expectations. So you've got a very long supply chain here. There are a lot of places that bad code can enter into this, whether it's in the chip, whether it's in the uh, chiplet, whether it's in the IP. How do you know that you've got exactly what you're supposed to get? By verifying at different points in your supply chain, uh, starting off with some area where you know you have done your verification and been able to identify what you have is really what you think is got to be some type of an anchor point. Similar to what we do in, in trusted platform modules, um, a trust anchor is, is something you're going to have to establish at some point in your supply chain. The idea of a digital twin should set a reference for what you've got here, right? So can you do that kind of comparison? Yes, and in fact, that comes back to a lot of the formal technologies out there. If you're able to have that reference point and you have a, a point later in your uh, cycle that you want to compare to, being able to apply formal methods to prove even just logic equivalence uh, is a very important key step for having checkpoints along your cycle. So really what you have to do is take a look at security not as a monolithic type of problem, but more as this can creep in at various different stages, right? It is a process, that is correct, and even in the life cycle of, of the process, you're going to have new vulnerabilities that may enter into uh, 
your catalog of potential vulnerabilities, you need to be able to go back and be able to re-verify uh, your design even later in the cycle. Obviously, a lot of people have been worried about Trojans for a long time. Where have they actually shown up? We've seen a lot of concern with the kill switch. Uh, some activation trigger uh, that may be in your design that will turn off uh, data going out to an output uh, and being able to, to shut off effectively the function of your device. And so what you're trying to do with formal is be able to trace down from a functional level what's changed here and what's potentially different, right? That is, that is correct. Is there an issue with coverage? Because this is sort of a new way of looking at the problem, right? It, it is a similar way of looking at the problem, and we're still relating back to uh, coverage, and certainly to cover an entire device to be uh, completely sure that there is nothing in the device uh, is a long-term goal. We are just starting to scratch the surface with being able to de detect some of these certain signatures, and how we can move forward is being able to move that library and build that library up to where more and more of these structures will be covered. So if you have a hardware Trojan, is it one particular thing and a unit, or is it potentially a series of different steps that have to be activated in turn for that to turn on as a whole? The, the Trojan can take many different forms, and detection methods may detect any one or, or many number of those forms. Uh, we may, for instance, find just a piece of that Trojan, which might be the beachhead uh, for the Trojan to actually activate its, its uh, intended function. Have any of the uh, hardware developers actually taken a hard look at this and said, this is a serious thing we have to address, or is it still something that's the theoretical for a lot of uh, companies? At this time, it is still very theoretical uh, in, in nature. Uh, there are various standards bodies uh, looking at security and how do they address uh, bringing the level of security uh, in IC components up to a, a base level uh, for confidence to be able to use that device in their systems. John Holman, thanks for a really interesting conversation. Thank you.